How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy WrestleMania Sunday. WrestleMania weekend, so much pro wrestling. My God, I, I have to tell you, since <laughs> it's like Thursday night, uh, this entire week, I have watched so much, and, you know, I'm exhausted already, but I'm psyched for tonight. Tonight's going to be a great show. Uh, a lot of, we got to talk about last night, WrestleMania night one, a lot of good, a lot of weirdness. Um, you know, I'm going to say it was, it was, I thought it was a thumbs in a little above a middle. That was my opinion, but not for the reasons people think. We're going to talk about WrestleMania Night 1. We're going to review it. We're going to go through all the matches. WrestleMania Night 2 starting soon. By the time the show's over, we're going to be at Night 2. We're going to give a preview to that. We're going to talk about the press conference from last night. A new ROH world champion. A surprise debut appearance on NXT because NXT was yesterday. I love an afternoon show. I had to watch it on delay. My daughter had, uh, don't ask, my town did the St. Patrick's Day Parade <laughs> in, <laughs> this weekend because of how the holidays fell. So my daughter was in the parade. I had to watch it and rush through it. We'll talk about that also. But, you know, a, a lot of good last night. Um, very different WWE. We're going to lean into that a little bit today because between what happened on Raw and SmackDown and everything else, you could see the direction of this company. And where they're headed, this was the first Vince mcmahon list WrestleMania. We'll go into that. And a whole lot more when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's start off with WrestleMania Night 1. MG, our uh, producer here. You know, I watch hello, very hello. differently. Uh, you know, and, and my... I always say, the, the way that you're consuming the content really plays an impact on... How, what you thought of the show, you know, especially when you have people over. I don't I don't necessarily know if it's a fair assessment. I don't know if you're supposed to watch this alone. I don't know if you're supposed to watch this with a live crowd. I don't know if you're supposed to watch this with a bunch of uh, degenerates in your house uh, throwing martinis in each other's faces. I'm not even exaggerating. Uh, <laughs> I so my experience is very different than maybe Matt's experience or John's experience or, or anybody watching this. But I, before we review this whole thing, Matt, I, because you know you're you're as much of a diehard pro wrestling fan, old school pro yes, wrestling indeed. fan that that I know. Uh, you really you 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 consume so much wrestling, you follow so much of it. Like, what did you feel about this entire show? I felt it was refreshing, and I put okay. some notes in there for you. I felt. The way they did the production, those angles of them coming out behind them as they're coming through the curtain, okay, I thought was fantastic. Uh, the just the overall presentation, you could tell that it was being produced by totally different people with totally different influences than we've seen previously in previous years. Yeah, and that was my initial take, and then just and you could just tell the way the free flowing. I thought Pat McAfee is so good on commentary. Um, it just, and they let the people, they let everybody breathe and do what they do. And it just felt good, you know, from that standpoint, as far as the matches, how, what did you feel as far as the matches? Um, I thought the, well, we'll get into it, but the yeah. women's, match, but overall, like opening, an overall, like thumbs up. Thumbs yeah, I thought they were very, thumbs up, thumbs up. I mean, the only match that really, there was, uh, the, brother the uso match i was looking forward Just, to that yeah that i know one felt a little flat to me other yeah. than that they all kind of they all kind of uh uh had brought something else that i haven't seen before so yeah it was really good. okay let's go into this mm. uh by the way freezing cold in philly uh they it, they yes. kept saying it was 50 degrees but there was a little bit of a of a disclaimer there it was 50 but it felt like 45 i tell you they they well by, at the start of that main event, they flashed that 50 degrees and felt like 45 thing, right? I'm getting mm -hmm. messages from people at w like within WWE, the organization. Uh, one, one guy wrote to me uh, that's pretty well known there. He wrote, I'm freezing my blank blank off <laughs> and we still have hours to go. 
So yeah. I, and that was everybody in the crowd. It was very cold. For and, so for those that haven't been in, just to help you out here, those that haven't been in a stadium, it's like a vortex. Uh, when yeah, yeah, when you when you're up in that third and fourth level or fifth level, I don't know how many uh, tier levels there are in uh, Lincoln Financial, but you were up there, and trust me, I've been to a playoff baseball game before where it was the same situation. I was at the top, and by the end of the thing, it was thirty degrees, and I was miserable. I couldn't. Yeah, it's very. At some point, you can't enjoy it anymore. Yeah. So, I, and that was that was the case for a lot of people. That that that. And the later it mm -hmm. went, the you know you're just exhausted. Your body is just yep. done at that point. We'll go into that as the show goes on. But, yep. You know, I mean, what a spectacle. Uh, this is a you know, it, like you said, they have a new set of paint on them. Uh, it, the, the opening was different. You know, I, I enjoyed it. it. It felt like a big production, which it always does. Night one began Rhea Ripley defeating Becky Lynch. I love this match. Rhea looked like a million bucks. Becky looked amazing. What was she dressed as? Cause I think those, I think she had scripts from her book on her. Uh, okay. Wrapped my father, her. I think that's what it was. My father in all of his wisdom, God bless Fred. <laughs> he looked at me. And he looked at Rich, and he looked at Alex, all the boys at my, at my party. All the boys at my house. Uh, he goes, why is she dressed like Budweiser? <laughs> that's, that's and what I'm like, what? You guys what? Are you, what? And he goes, he, goes, he goes, listen, man, he, she's dressed like Budweiser can. And I died. We all died. <laughs> so and you couldn't my father, it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it, then I couldn't unsee it. First, I never, I would never have seen it, then I couldn't unsee it. I, we were dying at Classic Fred, but this was a fantastic match. Um, Becky was sick all weekend, so she came in like Jordan in the playoffs. Jordan in the finals with a flu. Uh, she performed great. Uh, great intro. Becky, uh, Rhea Ripley, though, is, I mean, is she the as, listen, uh, the best is relative, right? But is she, like, the number one female wrestler in the world right now? I would say so. Uh, I would say, yeah. Um, from from an American Rhea. standpoint. And we'll I'm, talk, I'm not, yeah, I'm not we'll talking about match quality. About... I'm not talking about match quality. Right. I'm not talking, mm -hmm. you know, that that's, you, we could go on and bring up, you know, half of the stardom roster and from, talk about how they're the best. Yeah. From, like, a yeah. like a performance level. But as far as, like, a Rhea, yeah, unbelievable. Total package. Yep. Mm -hmm. total package. Yeah, and, and it's so good because, you know, when, when she came into WWE, right, her and Tony Storm, that, that generation of talent that came in, there was a lot of concern on how they will be handled. Because, you know, before this version of Rhea, when she was still, I mean, just, a you know, she was blonde, blue-eyed, and, and, you know, she was this baby face. Everybody knew there was tremendous promise. I don't think anybody anticipated what we got from her. And this is, she was unbelievable. I absolutely love this match. Fantastic open. They top gave to bottom. Her the, uh, they gave her the, uh, the performance entrance. Motion, most of us in, in white. Uh, yeah. Performed her out. Uh, you know, very popular metal And band. they were all wearing, uh, they were in now. Rhea face, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, Which, I was like... Eh, I didn't realize that was a guy. I was, oh, that's Chris. It was a little. It was a little <laughs> daunting. It was a little daunting at first when I like looked up and I saw it. It was spooky. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was revealed that Becky was sick all weekend and she worked the match. She did great. Uh, this was a clean finish. Hit her move. One, two, three. No shenanigans. No question. Rhea is the man. That is what we know now. Fantastic. This went did into you, the. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, before we move into the next match, uh, did you um, see her on Pat McAfee? Rhea, I, I saw parts of it. I, I, mm. I saw parts of it. I saw more of Becky on it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're talking about Pat McAfee. I'm sorry. I was talking about Ariel. No, I didn't see her on Pat. What, what, what happened with Pat? Oh, did we lose him? He's gone. He's gone. I have no idea. I didn't see it, but... We'll go into this. Let's go into the six-pack uh, ladder match. This was okay. Uh, you know, I, I think there was a lot of confusion for people what the rules were here, right? The two sets of belts. Uh, you had the two sets of belts. You had 
the uh, you had all these teams. People thought if you pull one, you get both. I don't think a lot of the people were understanding the rules. But what ended up happening is about seven minutes in, we got a producer back, right? We got John and uh, MG back here. Yep, I see them. Okay, wonderful. We had a little uh, outage here while we're doing the show. We're just continuing it. So seven minutes in, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller win the SmackDown titles. Grayson Waller pulls the title down. They are now the tag team champions for SmackDown. And then they just continue fighting. And they continue having the match. The match went on. This went on about 17 minutes. The Miz and our truth are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Defeating Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods. Xavier came out like Consequences Creed, which was awesome. Throwback to his TNA uh, personality. I thought this was great. And Tyler, I, and think about, and Tyler uh, I, I enjoyed it. Now, was I think there, it was meant to be Apollo Creed. It was, was it meant to be Apollo Creed? Well, that was his whole gimmick was based on Apollo Creed. I think it was. They're in Philly, Rocky, so it makes sense. Rocky, yeah. Philly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I thought this was a fine match. But listen, we're out of time here. We're going to go to a quick break. We're going to come back. We'll pick it up. We'll continue on with the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Listen, no promise. I, I'm, I got to tell you one thing. I've been doing this for years, right? Whenever we do a recap of a long pay-per-view like a WrestleMania. My timing is a little off, so forgive me a little bit. I'm used to long form. The, the breaks get in the way. You guys hear that, Sports Byline? I want to go commercial free. <laughs> Joking. We got to pay bills here. Rey Mysterio and Andrade defeated Santos Escobar, Dominic Mysterio. This was interesting. Andrade looks great. The story was told on Friday with this, where Andrade came out uh, with Dominic, and then he turned on him, and he helped Ray. Uh, Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey of the Philadelphia Eagles came in, wearing lucha masks. Eagle in, Eagles-inspired lucha masks to stop Dominic from using the chair. That would lead to the finish. This was fun. 11 minutes. Not bad at all, right? Logically. Yeah, logically, it probably didn't make a lot of sense. Why are these two big dudes out here? But who are from, these big giant the audience, dudes? It yeah. was great. And Pat Listen, McAfee they do that played it up, but it's like are these luchadors. <laughs> Pat McAfee great. was on fire all uh, all night. Uh, I thought this was fine. Uh, it was a really good. Uh, it was a great, entertaining match. I had no problem with this one. The next match, however, was a bit of a dud. Oh. Jey Uso defeated Jimmy Uso. 11 minutes. They did not go long at all. And part of the issue here, and we were talking, I've, I've been speaking about this for two, three weeks now. In a different time frame, this would have been a, a pretty hot match for a WrestleMania main event. You know, not a main event, but a WrestleMania match, right? I think it just got overshadowed by everything else happening in this Bloodline storyline where it just... It got forgotten, and the crowd wasn't into this. They had, they were very quiet. Uh, the the pacing was a little off. You know, it was a quick match, but it felt so much longer than eleven minutes. I don't know why. What what do you think happened here? I mean, I gave my reason. I I, I think they just got lost in the shuffle of things, and they it just didn't pick up any steam. Yeah, and I. I... I also think maybe the weather had something to do with it here. Maybe they got affected by it. There was some. You're right. It just the heat wasn't there. They the they didn't there. get into it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they did not they get into personally, it personally. Yeah, and I think that that just showed over time. It just yeah, it was just a flat match. And I really you know, was the pay, the to timing. It. I thought this might steal the show. Sean Ross app on Fightful Select put out the uh, the timestamps prior to this, prior to the match going on. So. I was looking at who's getting, you know, who went short, who went late, and a lot of the stuff got cut. They went shorter, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. This was supposed to go about 15 minutes. Um, it was whatever. I, I, would this have been the worst match on the show? Maybe. Had the least heat. Mm-hmm. Didn't love it, but... Let's, put it, let's say it like that. At least didn't heat. have heat. Yep. Yeah, Jey Uso defeated Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Uso here. Six-woman tag match. 
Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jade Cargill defeated Dakota Kai and the tag team champions Asuka and Kairi Sandy went about eight minutes and three seconds here. You know, this was more of a display of Jade than anything else. They want to show her dominance. They want to show that she's a big deal. They gave her a, I mean, just a tremendous, uh, you know, just she's so impressive. They came out on, on the stage and they did their intro. I mean, she really was a story of this match, right? It was more to sh display and, and kind of show people what she, she's capable of. Yes. Yeah. And, and I thought, I thought all the women did good for what the time they were given. Uh, Kari Sane looked ridiculously like disheveled for lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. Why is in a that? Good way, just yeah. Like, yeah. What, what was, she, why did that happen? <laughs> it helped. I don't know. She, but yeah. It, and, and she plays the, um, she plays up, she's a great seller i mean she's probably one of the better female sellers there are and it just it just worked i just liked it it was different yeah. you're right it was mostly to feature um jade and she got the finish she got the win yeah and you know that's that the next match arguably the best match of the night oh. uh i and you know we we were talking about this and i was hoping and and i think i said it on a on um Matt Men on friday my fear with this match was that it would get placed in a place on the card where the crowd would be dead and they wouldn't appreciate it. That was not the case here. That wasn't the case. You know, they started <laughs> off. Sammy's wife is in the back. Sammy's son is in the back. He's coming to the, to the ring. And I love that follow through. And people are, you know, telling him yes. he's got this. And Kevin Owens is there right at Gorilla as he's about to exit. And he gives him a big hug. And Sammy comes out. I may or may not. Got a little dusty right about yeah, that. Yeah, so like, okay, good. Now Look, I got right? goosebumps like The Rock does. <laughs> I got goosebumps here. Um, I thought they did such a great story there, and it helped with this match. And Gunther's tremendous. Arguably the best mm. match of the night. I would consider it the best match of the night. Such a great underdog story. They went a little over 15. They went 15-30 here. And Sammy defeated Gunther to dethrone him as Intercontinental Champion. Sami Zayn, the new Intercontinental Champion. This was incredible. Great match. 666 Great days. Odd 666 number to end days. it on, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know what? That's a good way to end it. Uh, then we got Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis coming out. They announced the attendance at 72,543. Jam-packed house. I don't know if that's the legitimate number. I don't know what Russell... T Russell Ticks had like 70... I think they said 68. 67. I I, 68. 68. Yeah. Okay. I mm -hmm. mean... Somewhere 72 with staff, 72 with everybody in the building. You know, the, the ghosts. You people could add up the, all the ghosts that the haunt highway. that building. Yeah, people on the mm -hmm. highway. Yeah, people you on get the a couple thousand on, here. Uh, around the building. <laughs> no, I mean, legitimately, it was a jam-packed crowd. So, uh, fantastic. We're in the main event now. This match was scheduled to go 45 minutes, and it did 44 minutes and 31 seconds. That is not counting the 20-minute intro. It was before 10 o'clock when this match began. When the first entrance began, it was before 10 p.m. This went on forever. My, my, I was psyched to see The Rock. Listen, I'm able to disconnect my pro wrestling analytical mind from having a good time watching this. My kids are there. Everybody's at the house. Everybody wants to see this. We want to see what Dwayne is wearing. Is he wearing the undies or is he back to, is he wearing pants? That was a big topic he in my house. You, didn't he? He swerved all of us. Well, he wore like an Elvis outfit. He wore like the Scott Hall Elvis pants <laughs> more than anything else. So the entrances alone were over 20 minutes, right? Wasn't that the thing? It was like 22 minutes for the entrances? It's pretty much, yeah. They all got really long entrances. All four. The Rock comes out. All individual. Yep. With the People's Championship which is the Brahma Bull title, with a revised version of it, that Muhammad Ali's wife gave him at the Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday. I was wondering, I'm like, why did they do this? Because he didn't even get an entrance. He just like popped out of the side and came out during the Hall of Fame yeah. to get this. So 
So I was like, huh, that's mm-hmm. weird. Okay. You know, and now, now we can see it. Obviously, this is going to sell a ton of merch. They're probably selling that title at WrestleMania. They're probably going to sell it online. It'll be a big successful thing. But he comes out holding the title like he's the champion. Okay. Then, you know, they do the whole intro. This was, the pacing was interesting here. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was what it was. That's how I saw it. Now, if this match went 20 minutes shorter or 10 minutes sh- shorter, how would I have felt? Ten I don't minutes know. Is what I, was thinking, yeah. I don't know because I was around mm-hmm. so many people where my opinion is a little bit mucky. I said mucky. That's allowed. The FCC is not going to throw me off the air. That's a, that's a totally allowed word, okay? Mucky. <laughs> I... Did it serve its purpose? Yes. 130%. Was it cool to see The Rock there? Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, the match somehow turned into a no-rules match, which was, like, I, I kind of missed it at first, and I had to rewind and watch it again after everybody left. The fire, the spot where he... Uh, he, he told the ref, he's going to he's gonna and fire him. Don't and count. Don't, don't count. count, or I'll fire you. Yeah. Okay, halfway through the match. So it, then it, just, it turned into... At that point, yeah. Yep. Uh, it became a no no rules match. So I don't know. Bloodline rules became a thing. Um, listen, he got the pin. One, two, three. On Cody. The crowd was weird for this match. They were cold. They were tired. Somebody from WWE messaged me and he goes, maybe this is the argument that we go on earlier. Do we need to do a show? I, I, I listen, and, and yeah. the, what people think, like whenever, whenever you know, I'm sure many of the people that are watching have an opinion on this. They have the same opinion in WWE. Everybody, I mean, you could come up with a logical reason why they shouldn't go on late, but they're not in the pay per view business anymore. How would this have changed if they started at six o'clock or five o'clock Eastern? Is it too early for the East Coast? You know, these are all conversations to have. But that crowd was tired by the end. Uh, they got to see The Rock win. They got to see The Rock hold the title up. And now this is leading into tomorrow. I thought it was fine. But he was tired. I'll tell you that. So far, no injuries. We don't know of any bad injuries here. We don't know. Uh, I mean, which is a positive. There was a lot of concern. But listen, man, he did a 45-minute tag match. At 50-something years old. When we... Come back from break. We're going to talk about the press conference in night two of WrestleMania. That's coming up in a few short minutes here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. WrestleMania night two starting soon. (laughs) It's unbelievable. I got to run out of here and watch it now. Literally run out the door. Let's talk about the press conference here. Some key things here. Rhea Ripley. She said that um, said that what people see out there is organic version of herself and how she would really react to things. Said the four horse women have done so much for the business, but between herself and the uh, and others like Bianca Belair, they're taking this to a high, higher level, to the highest level. She called her match spectacular. I mean, it really was a great match. She thanked Becky, you know, they put the match together. I mean, just... It was a really, really good match. Roman Reigns came out with Paul Heyman. Talked about breaking Hogan's record of headlining the most WrestleMania events tomorrow, which is unbelievable, huh? Oh, yeah. Hmm. He's passed that record of headlining the most WrestleManias. I mean, listen, man, from the day one, from day one, this dude showed up in that company. Everybody knew that he is the future. That was decided. Just look at him. How do you not pace your company around that guy? (laughs) Roman said that he'll smash the record tomorrow night and move on to his next goal. He's also a hundred and something days shy of beating Hogan's world championship record, which I don't know if he's going to do. I don't think that's going to happen. At one point, Roman in character has to be acknowledged. So our friend Issa was in that press conference. Roman called on her. She got a Roman Reigns tattoo. Did you know that? I didn't know that. 
So at wow. the at WWE World, there was a tattoo like station. And she got a Roman tattoo. And I think Roman saw that because she constantly talks about Roman. So they called on her. And she said, she goes, I acknowledge you, my tribal chief. And then Roman said something like, I need everybody to acknowledge me or something. And somebody booed. He halted the press conference and kicked that person out for booing. So, so good. <laughs> so good. Uh, regarding his leukemia status, you know, Pat McAfee during the match mentioned that Roman is fighting leukemia currently, right? And it kind of like, I paused. I was like, wait a minute. I thought he's in remission. You know, I, I didn't know if it was like a slip, you know, on commentary. But Roman addressed it. He said that he's still taking oral chemo. And he'll probably be taking it most likely for the rest of his life on and off. He said he, he's still in remission. Uh, and it's something that's going to be part of his life. But, I, I mean... Just to add that element to this and, and to the fact that this guy is going out there and, and performing at the level that he's performing. And he, he's actively fighting leukemia. Listen, I've had family members that have gone into remission with leukemia. You're never in the clear, really. It, it's a scary, scary thing. Obviously, the type that he has is... Uh, knock on wood not not hyper aggressive and he's you know he's as healthy as he possibly could be and he looks fantastic but just add that you know to the stress of it all the fact that he for the rest of his life essentially he's gonna have to take medication to fight this and it's not easy medication this is not medication without side effects speaks to the to the uh, i mean so much about him on teaming with the rock he said that he's coming back to the team with him, I don't know what this says. He said that his coming back to team with him shows how important the bloodline story is. Thank you. That's not your fault, MJ. Just written weird. Uh, listen, I think it added a new level, new element. Rock also in the press conference came out. He said he felt great following the match. He had the time of his life. He had about ten to twelve weeks of training camp. He flew in wrestlers who worked their their asses off. When asked about his future with more big matches, and Rock said there might be there might be more. Which definitely, I think they're gonna be. They've already set up so many stories here for him. Him and Seth could be one. Him and Cody, obviously. Him and Roman is the big payoff match. When asked about a specific time for when he decided to do WrestleMania 40, he replied when Ariel when Ari Emanuel called and said, I'm buying the company. That's when he knew he was coming back. Fascinating. He said there were talks for almost two years, uh, almost two years ago for WrestleMania 39, but it didn't shake out, you know, and the selling the company led, led to this. And we reported this. I mean, even, dude, I, I was on this story from day one. I was specifically told that he was going to wrestle Roman. It was happening. And obviously things change and things happen, but just adds more to this. He negotiated uh, between Ari Emanuel and Nick Khan about coming back. Rock did confirm that the original idea for WrestleMania 40 was himself against Roman Reigns, but he said they listened to the fans as they matter and their voice mattered. And they, they had an opportunity to listen. And you know what? They did the right thing here. I was very much against it from day one, but it, it, they did do the right thing. <laughs> I wanted to see that singles match, and I think we're going to get the singles match, but, you know, the Cody story is going gonna, is gonna to happen. When asked if there'll be any surprises during Sunday's Bloodline Rules match, The Rock said, absolutely. You can sure expect the unexpected and a lot of surprises. I mean, listen, my, my if I'm going to fantasy book, which I never do on the show, or rarely do, I'm going to say <laughs> Austin comes out, Cena comes out, big schmaz. You get a nice little face-off between The Rock and Austin in some weird way. You know, people go, oh, my holy s, holy s. Just a little bit adds a lot. Triple H said on Friday, SmackDown was the highest grossing SmackDown of all time. He also said NXT Stand and Deliver set the record for the brand. They had over 13,000 people in that building. He reiterated that this is a new time for the company, a new era, and they were just getting started. Someone did bring up Brock Lesnar and asked what his status was. And he said regarding Brock, he's still in the company. He's just home being Brock. 
That was Brandon Thurston that brought him up. Brandon Thurston asked it. Good. Our friend Brandon. Yeah. Dude, he's the best. He, he's incredible. Uh, WWE announced that there's a documentary behind the curtain for WrestleMania 40. It'll appear on their YouTube channel on Wednesday. Julia made her first appearance. You want the documentary or Julia? Yeah, just no. Well, well, both, but um, uh, the 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 documentary because normally this would be one of those WWE 24s. Yeah, that they heavily produce and put it out months from now. They're doing this. They're Quick. they're getting in front of it and and right away, which is I think is cool. Yeah. Um, and Julia was there at uh yes. NXT stand and deliver. So now we have an answer as to what she's going to do. But very uh, star-studded week. And also Mark Briscoe won the ROH uh, Supercard of... Uh, he won the ROH World title at Supercard of Honor. Uh, this is 11 years to the day of his brother uh, winning it. Which was pretty cool to see. Let's go into, uh, to night two. Do we have this in my notes? Yes, you not do. Have, I do. I'm trying to find it here. Oh, here we go. Night two. Let's talk about this before uh, we head on to break. Starting off, the match is going to start off uh, with... Actually, you know what? Let's go through the, how you have it. Uh, you got a Philadelphia street fight. Bobby Lashley, Montez Ford, Angelo Dawkins against Karrion Cross, Akam, and Razor. All right, let's see. It's a street fight. They're going to go all over the place. Fine. LA Knight, AJ Styles. I, you know, I got hot and cold on this, but I have to tell you, I saw, and the little things matter sometimes. I saw on TikTok, they shot that angle a couple of weeks ago where LA Knight showed up at AJ's house. Did you see that, Matt? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Yes. On TV, it was fine. I thought it was, I thought it was a good piece of, you know, to add to their story. But the TikTok version is what sold me. On TikTok, you know, it's, it's, 9 by 16. It's long. So it's, your, 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 your viewpoint is very tight. It was in black and white. It has the body cam info on the side. So you could tell that they shot this on a body cam. They didn't reproduce it. It looked real. I'm watching this. I thought it was an actual body cam footage of like some, some drunks fighting. But it wasn't. It was them. I, I, I fell into it. I loved it. It was great. So this is added more hype. Also, they, um, on Friday, there was an attack. Uh, LA Knight and AJ Styles started fighting at the, what was it, the, the, the media day? Yeah, it was WWE World, and they were doing the media. And we were, we were in the middle of recording Mat Men, and all of a sudden, people started sending us this video. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. So, AJ got a busted yeah. nose, awesome. so it added more story to this. So it, I, I think they've done, you know what, you know what was missing from that? from that Uso feud, stuff like this. Yes. This, and, and I'm curious how the crowd is going to eat this matchup. If they're going to like it or going to sit on their hands. I don't know, but it's going to be very telling of, you know, just adding more to the story and it mattering. Because this is kind of in that same box on the show. We'll see how the crowd responds to it. WWE United States Champion Logan Paul defends against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in a triple threat match. I was so into this when he was a singles match with either Randy or Kevin. The triple threat kind of took me out of it a little bit, but I'm sure they're going to do some fantastic stuff. Do we get to see Logan Paul go into a RKO, into a stunner? Does that happen? Maybe. Something like that. I know... Uh Randy said on um, ESPN, he did an interview with ESPN. He said, I plan on pulling something out that I've never yeah. done before. And I could see a pop up uh, RKO. Yeah, maybe KO something like launches, that. launches uh, Logan Paul into the air and he catches him and drops him. That might be kind of cool. We also have WWE Women's Champion EO Sky defending against Bailey. I hope this is Bailey's moment. I want to see Bailey win the title. The opening match of the show. Is WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins defending against Drew McIntyre? The story should be that Seth is so banged up and Drew is just taking advantage of that. And, and I think that'll be the story here. Now let's go into the main event. Universal Champion Roman Reigns defends against Cody Rhodes in a Bloodline Rules match, whatever that means. This is going to be the story for the future. However, this goes over. And the importance of this being a big deal. And this match being beloved matters. You cannot have a dud here, guys. This cannot be 
debatable whether or not it was a good match or not. This has to be a home run to every extent. The importance of this match is going to reflect on the future of this company. If Cody's the man, man, he better get over with this. It better not be a dud. If Cody loses, you better have something unbelievable planned that's going to make people forget. I'm telling you, they have to do something huge here. The trajectory will shift. If this is a dud, it'll shift. I don't think it's I don't think it's a dud. I don't think it'll be a dud. I think they're being very careful with this. They know how important it is. That's why The Rock is here. That's why everybody's going to be involved. But at the end of the day, we want to see that moment from Cody, right? That's the moment that people want to see. I'm not when I say we, I'm not saying me specifically. I want to see whatever's best. Whatever turns out to be the best decision, that's what I care about. But man, Cody, you know, Cody losing. What happens? Not nothing good. MG, who wins? Quick. I would say I'm going to say uh, Cody wins, and we get that big celebration with him and his mom in the middle of the ring. I think that's, that's how you got. have to end this. And that's how you have to mm. end it. There's also rumors that Cody's going to bring back. He's going to change the title. Do we get the old winged eagle belt? Is that what happens here? People, people are losing their minds over this. But this is, this is going to be night two. A few minutes here. We're out of time here. Uh, going to a break. Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Spotlight. Final few minutes of the show here. <laughs> While this is going on the show, and I wanted to bring this up, an announcement. Actually, before the announcement, I got a text message. And in that text message, I was told uh, a few expletives to not say anything and that they don't know if this is legitimate or this is some sort of stooge test, as I was told. But Tony Khan is going to be showing the video of the all-in fight between Jack Perry and CM Punk on Dynamite. And a lot of people were very confused over this from the WBD side. Talent, that, that, you know, I heard from a few people in, that worked there. They were like, yeah, this is what they're planning on doing. People are really mad because the account, apparently, of what CM Punk is saying is not accurate. And they're going to release the security footage from Wembley. I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, you know, uh, what are we doing? How does that help? Anything. I don't think it does. Feels petty. Feels petty, doesn't it? I mean, listen, man. You know, what would Vince have done? Vince would have probably done the same exact thing. Fair. I'm willing to bet, you know, and I'm sure Tony is mad. I would be really mad if I'm Tony after being insulted like that. But listen, is this the right move? Do I want to see the footage? Sure, I want to see the footage. I did. I mean, I, I, ha I... I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. I mean, is it a meme? Is it going to do like a meme? Is, are they going to make it into a joke? Are they going to be serious? I don't know, but we're going to find out on Wednesday. Guys, enjoy the show today. Have fun. Show's kicking off soon. I'm going to get a drink. I'm going to order some food. I'm going to watch it. And I'll see you guys next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.